Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a sack tote bag. Now I'm going to show you how to draw your own pattern. It's really easy and whatever you do don't throw this pattern away because in other videos coming along down the road I will show you how to take this same pattern and make your bag look completely different. So it's a great basic pattern. If you don't think you need it right now still draw it and store it away for future use. You won't regret it. So let's take a look at the bag. Isn't this cute? All right, it's just a big kind of square area down here. I've got this cute little ruffle just to sort of give it a little bit of flair. Now you have an option. You don't need to put the ruffle on. You also have an option of putting the ruffle on both sides like I did here. But like I said, it's an option. Then you have the strap up here and it just curves up and it's tied up here at the top. You can make this strap any length that you want. Now I'm going to open up this bag, Mr. Cameraman. Now I don't know how well you can see, but inside there are two pockets on one side and then over here on the other side is another larger pocket. Now I'm going to show you how to just make the pockets any size you want. So now I'm going to put this, pot, this purse up over my shoulder so you can see how it fits. Now I'm five foot one and this link works really well for me. I can just reach my hand in and grab something. So it's a great little bag and it's also washable. Okay, so let me show you or go over what you're going to need to make this bag. Okay, so now in case you're interested, the finished size of the bottom of the bag where you're going to carry all your stuff is 16 inches wide by 11 inches high. The strap is approximately 22 inches. Now as far as fabric, for the outside of the bag you're going to need one yard of fabric and you're going to be cutting two pieces out of that one yard. The lining, the same thing. One yard and you'll be cutting two pieces. And the cotton batting again is the same. One yard, two pieces. Then out of your scraps that are left over, you'll have plenty for the ruffle and any pockets that you want to make. But remember, you can always make this bag out of scraps, your pockets out of scraps. So it's a very versatile little project. Okay, let me set this aside. Now, you're going to draw your pattern. This is really, really easy. This is the paper that I use. It comes on a big roll. It's 12 inches wide and you can purchase it in a hardware store. I got mine in Home Depot. I'm sure Lowell's Hardware has it too. Or any store that sells paint. And you can get it in a variety of thicknesses. Now this is thicker than tissue paper which comes when you purchase a pattern. And you know tissue paper tears immediately. This is a little more durable. So all you need to do is cut off a big long piece okay and then what I recommend you do is tape it onto your cutting mat while you draw it like I have okay so now if you have a 12 and a half inch square ruler this is going to be really easy I recommend to all of you who are just getting started with sewing and quilting that you have one of these 12 and a half inch square rulers so what you're going to do is you see this eight and a half inch line where I've marked it you're going to take that eight and a half inch line and place it on the edge of your paper. Okay, so place it there. Make sure it's nice and straight along that edge. And then you're going to draw around two sides of it. So you're going to draw around this side, come around the corner, and draw around this side. And you're going to stop at 12 inches. Okay, then move the ruler down just a little bit so that the corner of your ruler is at the end of your line that you just drew and again make sure everything's straight and then you're going to draw your last line for the bottom of the bag okay so now you've just got the bottom of the bag drawn now you're going to 
take your ruler and put your six inch line right here on this corner. So line it up there straight across because you want to draw a line six inches in along this edge. So just draw it oh four or five inches long. Okay? Now if you have a long ruler like this, take your 23 inch line and place it here. Okay? And I also highly recommend you get one of these long rulers. It makes your sewing so much easier. And then now if you come down here to this end of the ruler, you're going to draw a line one and a half inches long. Okay, so you're going to stop right there at one and a half inches. Now, you're going to take a bowl. See this bowl here that I've got? Okay, you're going to take it and push it towards this line and this line. And once the bowl edges hit those two lines, then go ahead and draw a line connecting those two lines together. Okay? So now you have the curved part of your bag created. Now we just have two more little lines to draw. So you're going to place the ruler where the curved area starts and up here down at this end where the one and a half inch line ends. Place it there and you're going to draw a line to connect it. Okay? Now you have one more line that you can draw. You can either freehand draw a little curve or I don't draw curves very well so take these little templates that you can purchase in a fabric store. They're made by Taylor, okay? And place it to where it touches the sides here. Once it touches, then draw your last curved line. So now your pattern is drawn, but you want to mark on the edge here that this is going to be placed on the fold line. And also I marked it down here so you wouldn't forget, okay, so you don't get confused. So it's going to be straight across on your fold line. So now take your one yard of fabric and lay it out. Now I recommend that you pre-wash fabric, okay, because remember this is going to be a washable tote and you don't want any sh shrinkage. So if you're worried about shrinkage, especially if you're using 100% cotton to make this, I would wash it and press it and keep the fabric folded to the selvage edges here. This is your selvage in case you don't know what that's called, okay. So now take your selvage edges and pull it towards the folded side of your fabric, okay? Now smooth it out. Make sure that there's no lumps or bumps along here, okay? And just stick your hand in there if you need to to smooth anything out. Okay, so once you've got it all smoothed out, now I've already cut my pattern out. Here it is. You're going to place the pattern on the fold line. Okay, then place pins to hold it on that folded area. Okay, and continue pinning all the way down to this end. Don't forget to pin all the way across. Okay, and then continue pinning on all of the inside edges of the pattern. Then either with a pair of scissors or rotary cutter, go ahead and cut on all of these areas here, okay? So you're going to do the same thing for your lining and for your cotton batting. Now your cotton batting, you may probably have to cut each piece out separately because if you tried to fold it, you'd have four thicknesses you have to go through and it might not come out very well. Okay, so once you've got all of your fabric cut out, then you're ready to assemble the bag. 
I'm going to demonstrate how to do the ruffle for the outside of the bag. Remember this is just an option, you don't have to put a ruffle on. So here, take your ruffle fabric, remember it was four and a half inches wide by 17 inches long. Take it and fold it in half like this. Press it all along this edge with your iron. Then you're going to stitch one quarter inch away from the raw edge all the way across. Then go to one end, open it up, and begin turning it front side out. Okay, it'll take you about a minute to get it all through, but pull it all the way through. After you've gotten it all the way through, you want to fold it to where this center seam, see this seam here? This is the seam you stitched. Put it in the center. Then at your ironing board, press this flat all the way across. Then, take a needle and thread like I have here. And you're going to do little basting stitches all along this seam. Now, if you have a ruffle foot or a gathering foot, you could put this ruffle through your sewing machine and do your gathering. But not all of you have that, so I wanted to show you another way. So little basting stitches all along that way. And make sure you have a knot tied at the other end of your thread. Then hold on to the needle with one hand and then begin pulling the thread so that you create a ruffle. This is really easy to do. Okay, so once you've got it all ruffled up, you don't want it too tight, all right? Take your fabric for the outside of the bag. Now, in order to put your ruffle on, you've got to stitch a side of the bag together. So bring the two pieces for the outside, front sides together, and stitch one half inch along this edge here. Then at your ironing board, you're going to press that seam open. Press it open all the way across. Then you're going to take your ruffle and place it on the outside of the bag on top, let me line this up a little better, of the bag. Okay. So here's that seam. You're going to center the ruffle over that seam. And then just smooth the ruffle out till it's fairly even all the way across. And at each end where the raw edge is, make sure it's flat in there because you're going to be stitching along that area later on in the process. So you want it flat there and make all the ruffle more in the middle. Then place pins along the way, fairly close together, because you don't want your ruffle to shift as you're stitching. Now at this point, I'm using a walking foot because it helps to uh, stitch better over thicknesses like this, okay? You can get walking feet at your uh, sewing machine store or even on the internet. Just make sure the walking foot is designed for your machine. So then after you've pinned it, stitch right down that seam, that previous seam right in here. Stitch right down the middle. Now, if you want to have the ruffle on both sides of the bag, it's a little more challenging, but it can be done. So you want to bring the other two sides front side together. Okay, line up your edges and stitch one half inch all along that edge and then at your ironing board go ahead and press the seam open nice and flat. Then after you've done that turn your bag front side out and then you're ready to put on the second ruffle. Okay, once you have your seam stitched and you've pressed it open you want to go to the end of your ironing board and open your bag up and placing it face down on the ironing board, pull it in like this. And now 
you're going to pin this ruffle on. So the one reason why I like to put it on the ironing board is it gets that other side of the bag out of the way so that I don't pin the two sides together. So in order to pin that ruffle on, slip your hand underneath here like this and again line that ruffle up on the seam, the center of that ruffle and place your pins in there. You want to continue pinning that ruffle down on that seam, leaving your hand underneath there so you don't pin the ruffle to your ironing board, which I have done at times in the past. Then you're going to go to your sewing machine after you've got it all pinned on. You're going to open that other side of the bag out of the way. Slip this underneath your presser foot. Remember, you want to make sure the other side of the bag is out of the way and begin stitching down that seam. And every so often, place your hand underneath to make sure that the other side of the bag is out of the way. And that's how you put the ruffle on the other side of that bag. Now, set that aside, okay, that part of the bag aside, and take your lining pieces and the cotton batting. So here's my fabric for the lining. This is the outside of the lining. Place that face down, okay? Then take your cotton batting and place it on top, okay? And then line it all up. You want to do that on the other side too. So both pieces of lining and both pieces of cotton batting. Once you have them lined up, then you want to bring those two pieces front sides together. So the cotton batting is now facing out. And you're going to stitch just one side and press one half inch seam all along here. Then go to your ironing board and press this seam open, okay, all the way down. Now you're ready to put on the pockets. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, I've already got two pockets stitched on. Okay, so now here's my cell phone. Okay, I'm going to slip that in. Now when I made this cell phone pocket, I wish I had made it just a half an inch bigger, but it still fits and it's not too snug. And also this other pocket holds my glasses. Now everybody's cell phones and glasses are different sizes. So what you want to do when you are measuring for whatever item you want to store is take your fabric, or excuse me, take a tape measure and fold it over the edge right here. Okay, so you can see how wide it is. Okay, so this will hold my sunglasses. Okay, so measure the width and then also the length. Then you're going to add a half inch to the length and anywhere from a half inch to an inch for the width. So you're going to customize the pockets for your tote bag. Now, one of the things I hate about buying pre-made bags, and I do buy them, is the pockets never fit the item I want to put in it. And I, I've even lost glasses because they fell out because the pocket wasn't deep enough, okay? So now, to put your pockets together, you're going to take two pieces of fabric. And at one end, you're going to fold it over both ends there, this side and this side. Fold them over and press. Now here's the front side of my fabric, so I'm going to bring front sides together. And then line up your sides all the way around, okay? So here's your folded end. Now you're going to stitch, excuse me, here's my folded end. You're going to stitch on this side this side and this side. You're not going to stitch this closed just yet. So you're going to stitch one quarter inch seam from this raw edge in. When you come to a corner 
always leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, turn your pocket material, lower the presser foot. This way you don't lose your spot and continue down to the next corner. And do the same thing and then stitch down your last side. And at this side and this side, do a few stitches back and forth, okay? Now, at the two corners down here at the bottom of the pocket, you want to stitch, I mean, excuse me, cut some of this fabric off. Then, reach inside of your pocket, let me get it open, and turn it right side out, or front side out. So here's my pocket. It's all done. Here's my open end. Okay, this is the top of my bag, this is the bottom. You're going to place the open end towards the bottom, okay? Place it wherever you want it. And remember, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, you want to place your pockets on the side where the seams are. If you place it over in here, this is the side of the bag and it's not going to work very well because it's folded there. So remember, place your pockets where the seam side is. And then to stitch them on, you want to do a few stitches back and forth in here because this is a stress point. And stitch down this side and always leave the needle down, lift up the presser foot whenever you come to a corner. Stitch down this side and back up here and stitch back and forth. Okay, so you can place a couple of pockets on one side. Now if you want more pockets on the other side, which I do, I can never have enough pockets, you need to close this up just like you did the outside fabric. So bring the two sides together, line everything up, and stitch one half inch along this side and then you're ready to put your other pocket on. Now that you've got that other seam stitched and pressed open, open up your bag again and slip it over your ironing board. And then you're going to place that second or third and fourth pocket down on the other side. And you're going to pin it on just like you went through the process of putting your ruffle on stick your hand underneath so you don't pin it to your ironing board and begin pinning your pockets on whether it's one large one like this or two more smaller ones and then stitch them on just like you did the two previous pockets stitch along here always stitch back and forth a few times go around the bottom and back up to this other side and then you're ready to put the lining along with the outside fabric. Now you've got the lining stitched together with the cotton batting. You've got your pockets on. The outside of the fabric is stitched together. Outside fabric is stitched together with the ruffle on if you chose to put a ruffle on. Now you want to insert the lining section inside of the fabric for the outside of the bag. You're bringing front sides together. So match up your seams. So up at the top is where you want to match those seams up. Okay, so you've got two seams to match up. Place pins to hold it there on this side as well as this side. Then on the upper edge of the bag, you're going to begin placing pins along here. And that means along the straps. So you're going to pin all along here, all the way up to the top of the strap, around that corner, all along this edge here. And you're going to continue down on the other side of the bag until you go all the way around. And you'll wind up back here where you started. Okay? Then, after you've got all that pinned, you're going to stitch one half inch from this raw edge here, come in, and follow those pins and stitch all the way around the upper portion of the bag. As you can see, I've done my stitching along the upper edge of the bag all the way around 
including the straps all the way around the entire upper portion of the bag. Now at the ends of the stra uh, straps you've got this half inch of fabric out here. Whenever you've got a small curved area it works better if you cut some of this off like I did. See here? Okay? It's just going to make the edge lay flatter when you turn it right side out. Then before you turn it right side out go ahead and do little snips. Do not, be careful not to stitch through your stitch line. So you've got all these snips around this curved edge here. You do that on both ends of the straps. Then on this part of the bag where it's curved, you want to snip also. Can you see them? And make sure you don't stitch through your, your cut through your stitch lines. So on all curved sides you'll do that. Okay, now turn your bag to the bottom and then you're going to reach in between the outside of the bag and the lining and pull it apart like this. Okay, just keep pulling it out. Okay, now this next part can be a little tedious, but it can be done you've got to turn your straps right side out. So you're going to reach inside the strap. See I've got my hand going up and through there. Go as far as you can and begin dragging this through the tube of the handle here. Okay? And continue doing that till you've got it all the way out. You're going to do that on both straps. Alright, now that you have your bag turned front side out, now you want to pin the edges flat on just one side of the bag. So you're going to pin all along here up to the end of the strap and pin along this edge going back over to here. Okay? Now you're going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to pull the ruffle back a little bit and start stitching just a couple of stitches underneath the ruffle because we don't want to stitch on top of the ruffle. So you're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge there all the way around this curve, go up to the end of the strap stitch around, come back this side, stitch all along, and when you get to the ruffle on the other side, pull the ruffle back and go underneath a stitch or two and then go back and forth in place to tie it off. Now then you're going to turn the bag over and do the same thing on the other side. Pin the edges flat and stitch about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge. Now your straps are completely done. So now go to the bottom of your bag and you're going to turn the bag inside out. Okay, so bring it to where you see the lining and the pockets. And you're working on the bottom of the bag now. We're going to close it all up. So take your lining and cotton batting side and pull it away from the fabric that's for the outside of the bag. Just pull it away. Okay. Now take your, your ruffles on each side, or if you're not doing the ruffles, take the two seams and match them and place pins to hold it. Then pull this out, straighten it out, and continue pinning across on this side and then go over here and do the same thing. Place pins on this side. Then 
you're going to stitch it across the bottom. You're going to go one half inch from this raw edge and stitch all the way across to the other end here. All right, I just finished stitching the fabric on the outside of the bag doing that one half inch seam along there. After you've done that, reach back inside and grab the bottom of that fabric you've just stitched and pull it out, okay? To where now your, let me shift this a little bit, there we go, to where you're now working on the lower edge of the lining, okay? So now take that lining and make sure your seams are open and then you're going to fold each side in one half inch and do the same here. Fold it in one half inch and then pin it together. All right. Continue doing that all the way across the bottom of that. But put more pins in than what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get through it because I think you understand what I'm doing and continue folding it okay in one half inch and pinning do it all the way across the bag all the way over to this side also then stitch about an eighth of an inch from the lower edge here and stitch all the way across to this side, okay? Once you've got that done, let me go to my finished sample. Here's my finished one, here's the lining. I've stitched it across, okay? Now, reach and push this lining back inside of your bag. Let me get it all straight. And the very last thing you have to do, which requires absolutely no sewing, is to tie the straps together. And then you are done. I think this bag is really, really pretty. And it really doesn't take all that long to do this bag. And as I've said before, keep this pattern because down the road I will going, be going back to this same pattern changing it and making a completely different bag. Now suggestions other than this kind of fabric you can use denim, corduroy, or other heavy fabrics. Well I hope you try making this tote bag. They make great gifts. Now it's summer right now so Christmas will be coming so start thinking about some of the gifts you would like to make for Christmas. Now to keep informed on all my future videos you've got to click on subscribe. Click down there on the one in the lower right hand corner that's red and says subscribe or you can click on the round picture of my face in the upper left hand corner. And also I have found out some of you haven't been receiving the notifications for uh, my videos. You need to click on the little bell when you're doing uh, entering that you want to subscribe. There's a little bell next to it. Click on that, enter your email address, and the next time I have a new video, YouTube will send you a brief email with a big button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. Again, I'm Cheryl and I'm really glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and happy sewing.